This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. We're still looking at Elijah. And in this one, we're going to talk about Elijah and the end times. You see, since Elijah is coming back as one of the two witnesses, he's really got some stuff in his story that really reminds us of things that's going to take place in the end. So look at 1 Kings 18 and verse 1. It says, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. So the first thing is that latter rain. So you know the story. Elijah prayed that there would be no rain, and there was no rain for three and a half years. But at the end of this third year, there's going to be rain. So the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year. And this pictures the end of the second half of the tribulation. This is a picture of it where you will see the latter rain. In Zechariah 10.1 it says, Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. And also notice this rain is connected with the coming of the Lord. James 5, 7, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. And in the same chapter of James chapter 5, it also talks about Elias, which is Elijah. James five seventeen and 18, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months, and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. So it looks like when the Lord has finished wiping out the Antichrist and his army, that there is a downpour at the end of the second coming that will restore the land. And that's what I believe this is a picture of in 1 Kings chapter 18. Now, pictures don't match perfectly, so it's not exactly the same, but it's some, it reminds you of it. Notice that 1 Kings 18, 1 says that it came to pass after many days. And this phrase is also connected to prophecies of the restoration of Israel. You see, Israel is going to be restored at the end of the tribulation. In Ezekiel 38, 8, after many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations. They shall dwell safely, all of them. So uh, this pictures the restoration of Israel. So you can see how this story of Elijah, it keeps reminding you of things that's going to happen in the end times. But when it comes to me and you, what can we get out of this? God wants us to look at each day. So in 1 Kings 18, 1, and it came to pass after many days, after many days. So God wants us to look at each day and not just at the years. When you get up in the morning, you need to focus on doing right that day. I made a goal and schedule for each day of the week. That's what I've been doing. And if I focus on what I need to get done that day, and not so much about what I need to get done the whole week, then I, I end up getting more done that day. In Psalm 90 and verse 12, it says, Teach us to number our days, that we, we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. If you focus on doing right today, and then the next day focus on doing right that day, and then the next day do the same thing, then you'll be better off. Don't just get up and say, Well, I'm, I'm going to get started on that a year from now. Go ahead and do what you know to be right today because it could be your last day anyway. But that first thing that reminds us of the end times is that rain. I believe that's a picture of that latter rain. Now the next thing is famine. In 1 Kings 18.2 it says, And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. What was one of the things that Jesus said should be or would, would be around in the end? In Matthew 24, 7, he says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. In the time of Ahab, there would have been a famine of hearing the word of the Lord, except when it came to Elijah. The prophets of Baal weren't putting out the word. seems like just Elijah 
was putting out the word. Even though there was other uh, people of God that Elijah wasn't really aware of, it seems Elijah was really the only one doing much. In Amos eight eleven through 12, it talks about there being a famine in the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst of water, but of hearing of the words of the Lord. Today in America, you have 24-7 access to the word of God, and you are starving yourself biblically. In the church, there's a famine in the land, and it's self-inflicted. Everybody's uh, forsaking the words. But Elijah's faced with a famine in the land, physically and spiritually. And then the next thing, taking care of the Lord's brethren. In 1 Kings 18, 3 through 4, it says, And Ahab called unto Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. So Obadiah hiding and feeding the prophets of the Lord pictures men in the tribulation who take care of the Lord's brethren. In Matthew twenty five thirty four through 40, it says, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So, Obadiah taking care of those fifty prophets, and hiding them and feeding them, that pictures these uh, people that the Lord's talking to in Matthew 25, that take care of his brethren, and they're going to get to go into the kingdom. So Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. And he, even though he worked for Ahab and Jezebel, he hid these prophets that Jezebel wanted rid of. And this ought to, for us, this ought to give you some encouragement to to help the brethren as well. Even today, you should take care of each other. We need to give sinners the gospel and be good to them. But how much more should we take care of each other? In Galatians 6.10, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. How much more to the people that are saved? 1 Corinthians 9.11, If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Paul is saying he's sown to people are spiritual things, and it, would, it would, wouldn't be a bad thing if they gave him carnal things. You know, take care of each other. So this picture is taking care of the Lord's brethren. And it, so it says, For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. This is the future probably for America as well. The leadership is going to want rid of the Bible preachers. And you're going to have to, the preaching you're going to listen to is going to be in hiding. You need to be saving up some preaching right now. You know, it's available all over the internet. You could be downloading it and adding it to your library and hide it in your man cave. That way, when you've, uh, you, when they, they don't allow it on the internet no more, when they won't let you go out and hear preaching no more, you still got it. The next thing is a grass shortage. In 1 Kings 18.5, And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, into all fountains of water, into all brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So Ahab was more concerned with the things of this world. He wasn't concerned with getting in touch with the Lord. It didn't cross his mind to say, Lord, send some rain or help us. Uh, he was going to find fountains of water for himself. He didn't want to go to the real fountain of water. <clears throat> Him and Obadiah were going to split up and look for grass because the animals didn't have any to eat. So there's a grass shortage. A similar thing happens once again with the grass in the tribulation. Revelation 8, 7, the first angel sounded and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burned up, and all green grass was burned up. 
So there's your grass shortage in the time of a false kingdom under the Antichrist. Ahab is a picture of the Antichrist. Now, the next thing. Behold, Elijah is here. In 1 Kings 18, 6 through 7. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And I, as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Art thou that, my lord, Elijah? Elijah might have looked a bit different after what he went through in chapter 17. 1 Kings 18, 8, and he answered him, I am. Go, tell thy lord, behold, Elijah is here. Some preacher's name can be mentioned, and it just strikes a chord in a man. Elijah was one of those preachers. He wants Obadiah to go to Ahab and say, Behold, Elijah is here. And Ahab would look up, and the people around him would be in a moment of silence when they heard that Obadiah run in and say, Behold, Elijah is here. And they would freak out. The same thing will be said when Elijah comes back in the tribulation time period. And any Christ henchman will say, Behold, Elijah is here. Because in Malachi 4, 5, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So Elijah is coming back in the future. And he is going to be a thorn in the side to the Antichrist and his henchmen. And one of those henchmen is going to run into the Antichrist and say, Behold, Elijah is here. The next thing is, you're going to see saints on the wanted list. In 1 Kings 18, 9 through 10, it, and it says where Obadiah is talking to Elijah, it says, And he said, What have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant to the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom, whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation, that they found thee not. So Elijah was on the wanted list. And this will be the norm in the tribulation for the saints of God. It could be the norm for us in this country before the tribulation even starts. But certainly in the tribulation, in Matthew 24, 9, it says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Matthew 24, 26 says, Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Would you be willing to live for the Lord, even if it meant you were put on the wanted list, and that you kind of had to stay in hiding. The Lord hides the saints. That's the next thing that reminds us. In 1 Kings eighteen eleven through 12, it says, now, And now thou sayest, this is Obadiah talking again, and he's like, And now thou sayest, Go tell the Lord, thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall, cather thee, shall, shall carry thee, whether I know not, and so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. So Obadiah thinks that the Lord will carry Elijah somewhere else before Ahab can come see that he's really there. And then Ahab will just kill it, Obadiah. But this isn't a one-time thing in the scriptures for a man to be, you know, carried away by the, by the Spirit. And for example, in Acts 8.39, it says, And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. So Obadiah thinks that Elijah is just going to be carried away by the Lord when, Obah uh, when Ahab comes to see him. And then, for example, in Revelation 17.3, John said, So he carried me away in the Spirit into the wilderness. You see, the... Holy Spirit can teleport you somewhere else. He teleported John in the future. Ezekiel 3.14 So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away. Ezekiel 11.1 1, Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up. So the Spirit can take pick you up and take you somewhere else. At the rapture, God's going to raise us up and we're going to be teleported to heaven. We're going to meet him in the air. He's going to take us to heaven with him. And so Obadiah thinks that Elijah is just going to be hidden by the Lord before Ahab can come see him. And the Lord will hide the saints in the tribulation. In Psalm 27, 5, it says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. 
So the Lord can teleport the saints anytime he wants. But Elijah assures Obadiah that he will stick around for Ahab to see him. So it says in 1 Kings 18, 13 through 16, Was it not told my Lord, oh, this is Obadiah talking to Elijah again, and he says, Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred men of the pro Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Notice that what Obadiah said covered most of what we talked about. He just kept talking and talking and talking. Then you got Elijah comes back with one sentence there in verse 15, and he says, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah believes him. He runs to go tell Ahab, Behold, Elijah is here. And Ahab comes to meet Elijah. Think about this for a minute. There is no way that the president would come to meet with a common, ordinary, Bible-believing, hellfire preacher today. He wouldn't give him the time of day to come and talk with him one-on-one. -on -one. But this is what's happening here. Ahab comes to meet with Elijah. Now, Ahab is a very wicked king, the most wicked king up to this point. And what we're going to see next week is Elijah go against Ahab's prophets, the prophets of Baal. And it's going to be an epic battle.